Welcome to His Gospel Christian Fellowship. It's an honor to have you join us in worship service today. We invite you to visit us virtually at any time. Our mission is to share the good news of Jesus Christ and to love and support one another in our Christian growth. We are not here to judge, criticize, or condemn anyone. We teach, preach, and live God's Word and God's Word alone.
Hello everyone, welcome to His Gospel. We're so happy to have you here with us today. We are going to now go into our service by starting with our opening scripture. Opening scripture comes from Psalm 100 and I'm reading to you out of the King James Version and the Psalm says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he who hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. Let us go to the Lord in prayer right now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you and we praise you for another day. We thank you and we praise you for another opportunity to come before you. We thank you and we praise you, Lord, just for the opportunity to thank and praise you. Father, we are asking that as the word is delivered, that every word that proceedeth out of my mouth be, Lord, according to your will and your way. May the words of my mouth and may the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, Father. You 
are indeed our strength and our redeemer. Lord, we're asking that you open hearts, Father, and that the word is received, Father. And we thank you for your word. We thank you for everyone who is listening and tuned in right now. And it's in the precious, in the matchless, and in the magnificent name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. 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 So let us now go to the word of God. And I am going to ask you to meet me in the book of John, the gospel of John. And we're going to go to the fifth chapter and we're going to read 10 verses. So again, we're going to go to John 5, 1 through 10. And we will be reading out of the New Living Translation. However, there's one verse there that I'm going to read from both the New Living Translation and also the Old King James. And the Word of God says thus, Afterward, Jesus returned to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish holy, holy days. Inside the city near the Sheep Gate was the Pool of Bethesda, with five covered porches. Crowds of sick people, blind, lame, or paralyzed, lay on the porches. For an angel of the Lord came from time to time and stirred up the water. And the first person to step in after the water was stirred was healed of whatever disease he had. One of the men lying there had been sick for 38 years. When Jesus saw him and knew he had been ill for a long time, he asked him, would you like to get well? Now this is the verse that I'm going to read to you also out of the King James. And the King James rendition says, when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he, has, he saith unto him, wilt thou be made whole? And we're gonna go back to the New Living Translation. I can't, sir, the sick man said, for I have no one to put me into the pool when the water bubbles up. Someone else always gets there ahead of me. Jesus told him, stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. Instantly, the man was healed. He rolled up his sleeping mat and began walking. But this miracle happened on the Sabbath so the Jewish leaders objected. They said to the man who was cured, you can't work on the Sabbath. The law doesn't allow you to carry that sleeping mat. May the Lord add a blessing again to the reading and to the hearing of his word. Today's message is entitled, Wilt Thou Be Made Whole? Or in other words, do you want to get well, would you like to get well? And you know, when we read that passage, we would think that that's a very strange question for Jesus to ask a man who has been sick for 38 years. The first thing that we would think in our human reasoning is, of course he would want to be made well. But we're going to look a little bit deeper today at that question not only as it pertained to the man who was at the pool of Bethesda, but we're going to ask it as it pertains to us as well. Sometimes we say we want to get better. Sometimes we say we want things to improve. But the question really is, do we actually want something to change? Do we want those relationships to get better? Do we want our families to be made whole? Do we really want our finances to be made whole? Do we want our jobs to be made whole? Do we really want our bodies to be made whole? Do we want our minds to be made whole? And the question may again sound strange, but based on some of the behaviors and the reactions that we give, the answer may not be as apparent as it seems to be. Let's take a look at that, and let's look at a couple of the reasons that we may not really want to be made as whole as we say we want to. The first is fear. And let's take a look at Exodus 14 and 10. 
as a backdrop to this one reason. And, and in this passage, we read that Pharaoh approached, and I won't read the whole thing, but Pharaoh had allowed the children of Israel to leave Egypt after the plagues had been suffered by the Egyptians. He let them go and then he had a change of mind. So he took over 600 chariots and 600 of his best chariot men and other members of his military to go after the children of Israel and to bring them back. So in this passage, Exodus 14 and 10, if you read that from 10 verse 10 to verse 13, you will find that the children of Israel have the chariots of Egypt behind them and they have the Red Sea in front of them. They're a little bit afraid because they cannot see a way out of that situation. So because of their fear, they're coming to the conclusion that it would be better to go back. We're scared of what's in front of us right now. It's a whole Red Sea. We're scared of what we are facing right now, which is a vast ocean that we have no idea how we're going to get across. There are more than 6 million of us and we don't see any ships that are there ready to take us across this sea. We are afraid and we would rather be in the bondage that we prayed that God take us out, take us out of than to face what is before us. And the same thing is happening many times to us. We are afraid of what lies before us. We are afraid of the unknown. We would rather go back to Egypt. We would rather go back to bondage. At least we now know what that's like. Well, at least we know what we're going to experience. So we would rather stay in the bondage. And that is the answer for many of us to the question, do we really want to be made whole? In some people's cases, maybe in your case right now, no. I'd rather stay where I am because I know what's going on than to move forward to where God is trying to take me. We many times sabotage ourselves, sometimes consciously, sometimes unconsciously, because we are afraid of what we cannot see. Sometimes we're afraid of what people are going to say. As we read in the passage, our main passage, that the, the good church folk were upset with the man carrying his sleeping mat because it is the Sabbath. And take in mind or keep in mind that this is not a rule that God gave. This is a rule that man made up. And this man who had been sick for 38 years, he knew Jewish law. And he knew that someone was going to say something about him taking up his mat and walking on the Sabbath. But he did it anyway. Many of us, however, are afraid of what people are going to say. We're afraid of what people are going to think. So we use that fear to stay in the bondage that we are in, even though the Lord is calling out to us and saying, I will deliver you. The second reason that we sometimes sabotage our own deliverance is because of pride. Now, Sometimes what we think should happen is, or the way it should happen, the way God should do or perform a deliverance for us is not the way that he does it. We think that God is supposed to automatically wave a magic wand and deliver us instantaneously from that which we are praying about. Now in the passage here in John that we read, Jesus did just say to the man, get up and walk, and he was instantaneously healed. However, that is not how God works in every situation. Let's take a look at 2 Kings, starting at the 5th chapter in the 10th verse. And again, I will not read it all to you, but I would invite you to go and take a look at that passage. And what we have here is a situation where there was a man named Naaman and he was, he was a leper. He had leprosy and a little girl 
who worked in his household for his wife, stated, if my master would just go and see the prophet Elijah, he would be healed. So this mighty man, mighty warrior, did have enough humility to take the advice of the little girl. He went to the king and said that this has been recommended this has been stated as a way that I can be cured. And the king supported his going to see Elijah. So he went to see Elijah. But he got upset because when Elijah did not come out, Elijah sent word through his servant. And he said, and this is in the 10th uh, verse, Elijah sent a messenger out to him, talking about Naaman, with this message, go and wash yourself seven times in the Jordan River. Then your skin will be restored and you will be healed of your leprosy. Verse 11 tells us, but Naaman became angry and stalked away. I thought he would certainly come out to meet me, he said. I expected him to wave his hand over the leprosy and call on the name of the Lord his God and heal me. Aren't the rivers of Damascus, the Albana, the Fafar, better than any of the rivers of Israel? Why shouldn't I wash in them and be healed? So Naaman turned and went away in a rage. But his officers, some people who had a little bit more sense than him at that moment, tried to reason with him and said, Sir, if the prophet had told you to do something very difficult, wouldn't you have done it? So you should certainly obey him when he says simply, go and wash and be cured. So Naaman went ahead and took the advice or took, did the, what was commanded of him. And he washed seven times in the Jordan River and he was healed. But he had to get to a place of humility because he was expecting the magic wand approach. God may not choose to deliver via the magic wand approach. However, he chooses to deliver us if he has guided us to that method or that path, we should in humility do what we are commanded to do to be delivered. Sometimes that may entail you actually going to the doctor. You may feel like you want to go to church or you want to have somebody lay hands on you and, and pray for you and then you jump up and everything is healed right then and there. But sometimes the Lord is telling you, yes, you do have to go to the physician. Yes, you do have to go through those treatments. You do have to go through some pain. Yes, you do have to go through some tribulation. But if you do what I've told you to do, I will deliver you. Yes, you may have to leave a, a relationship. You may have to leave a job. You may have to go and see that therapist. You may have to go and do something that makes you feel that you are diminished. It makes you feel that you are not as mighty as you have placed yourself in your own mind. Yes, you may have to dip seven times in the Jordan. But if you do what the Lord has told you to do the way he has told you to do it, you will be delivered. So sometimes we have to put our pride aside and let God be God and do what he has told us to do. And that deliverance that we say that we want with that wholeness that we claim that we want will come to us out of what he has told us to do. The third thing that causes us sometimes to sabotage our deliverance is a lack of faith. We call up on God to deliver us. We ask the Lord, please take this situation away. But we don't really believe in our heart that he can or will do it. We don't really believe that he has the power or that he has the the will to help us in our time of need, even though he has told us over and over in his word that he will. But we have to believe that he will. We can go to the book of Luke, starting 
at the eighth chapter in the 43, 43rd verse. And this story is also found in Matthew 9, 20 through 22, as well as Mark 5, 25 through 34. And this is the story about the woman with the issue of blood. Now, Jesus was on his way to go heal a little girl. And there were crowds around Jesus, massive crowds around Jesus. But there was also in this crowd a woman who had been bleeding for 12 years. He had, she had expended everything that she had going to doctors trying to get better. But the Word of God tells us not only did she not get better, she actually got worse. So she's in this crowd and she came up behind Jesus. Now she could have stayed at home because what was happening at that time in that society is if you were a woman and you were bleeding, you were supposed to, you were considered unclean. You were supposed to stay home. You weren't supposed to come out in, in the midst of people. But this woman said that I know Jesus is there and I don't need to go up to him and, and, and get in front of him and, and say, hey, Jesus, would you please heal me? I don't have to make a spectacle because I'm not supposed to be out there to begin with. I don't have to plead my case in front of him in public. All I need to do is come out of this house. And all I need to do is just kind of come up behind him quietly. All I need to do is touch the hem of his garment. And I know that if I do that, that I will be made whole that I will be healed. She believed with everything in her that all she had to do was touch, not even touch him, touch his garment, and she would be made well. So that's what she did. And Jesus said, when we look at verse 46, well, excuse me, he, what he said in, in verse 45 is, who touched me? And in verse 46, he said, someone deliberately touched me for I felt healing power go out. And then the woman came before him and confessed that I was the one that touched you. I was the one that's been afflicted for 12 years. I was the one that knew I wasn't supposed to even be out here with all of these people. But I knew that if I could just touch the hem of your garment, that I would be made whole. And what Jesus told her in verse 48 Daughter, he said to you, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Because she believed, along with the action that she took, she had faith that backed that up. And because of her action and because of her faith, she was healed. My brothers and my sisters, too many of us pray unfaithful prayers. Too many of us pray and believe, do not believe that God will do what we've asked him to do. And that's self-fulfilling because if you don't believe it, it won't happen. When you go to God, go to God in complete and total faith. Now, it may not happen the way you are demanding that it happen. It may not happen in the timing that you've given God. But if you go to God in complete and total faith that he can deliver you from whatever it is that is ailing you or afflicting you, the Lord will honor your faith. The fourth and final area in which we sabotage ourselves, and that's fourth and final according to how this particular sermon is outlined. There are many ways that we sabotage ourselves, but we've got, we're looking at four of those ways today. The fourth one is excuses. In the text that we read from John 5, if we look at the seventh verse again, when Jesus asked him, wilt thou be made whole? Do you want to get well? The man did not answer yes. He did not answer no. What he said was, I can't, sir, for I have no one to put me into the pool when the water bubbles up. Someone else always gets there ahead of me. Excuses, excuses, excuses. Do you want to be made well? We don't answer yes. We don't answer no. But we'll say, hey, you know, my spouse won't help me. My kids won't help me. My job 
won't help me. My church won't help me. That check that I've been looking for hasn't shown up. I'm too old. I'm too young. I'm too skinny. I'm too fat. I'm too black and this society is oppressing me. Or I'm too white and the woke people are blaming me for everything. The Democrats are in power, so how can I be made whole? The Republicans are in power, so how can I be made whole? I don't have enough police protection or the powers of the police are too great. There's too much crime here. I don't have enough money. My mother did this to me. My father did this to me. My kids are doing this to me. My pastor did this to me. Always an excuse when Jesus continues to ask us, wilt thou be made whole? Do you want to be well? Do you want to get your life together? Do you want things to be better? It doesn't matter how you got there. Now, if we were to have continued reading in John, we will know that there was a discussion about whether it was the sins of the parents or the sins of the man that caused them to be lame in the first place. But from the purposes of what we're talking about today, it doesn't matter how you got there. You might have gotten there because of mistakes that you made. You may have gotten there because of disobedience in your life. You may have gotten there because somebody did something to you, your mama, your daddy, society, your third grade teacher, whomever. That may be how you got there, but that's not the question Jesus is asking us across the ages. He's asking us, do we want to get better? Do you want your situation to change? Do you want the Lord? Do you truly want the Lord to fix it and to bring you from where you are to where he wants you to be? Or are you destined to spend the rest of your life complaining about who will not help you get into the pool? Wilt thou be made whole? Or are you comfortable in your partialness? You see, one of the things we have to understand when the Lord, when Jesus says, wilt thou be made whole, we have to remember that God made us as a whole person. However we got into our broken state, however we got into the trouble that we're in, however we got into our broken situation, it isn't because you weren't made whole. One of the things that really bothers me when I talk to people, particularly people who are dating or who want to date or are looking for a marriage partner or have found one, they'll say something like, this person completes me. My brothers and my sisters, you were made complete. God doesn't make incomplete people. There may be circumstances in this life which break us down. But Jesus continues to ask us across the ages, wilt thou be made whole? Do you want to be returned to that wholeness that I created you to be in the first place? Sometimes we are comfortable in our partialness. And thus the answer is not right now. But do you want to spend the rest of your life that way? Let me tell you one thing that God means for us, Jesus came for us to have life and to have it abundantly, not partially, not a little bit, but abundantly. It isn't God's plan to just bail you out of problems. Jesus wants to bring you out completely. It isn't God's plan that you all living in hurting in your life for Uh, All that you're experiencing is hurt in your life. Jesus came to heal you. It isn't God's purpose for you to be desperate because he knows that he sent in the form of Jesus your deliverance. It isn't God's plan for you to live in a bad situation because he has already provided the solution. So do we really want to be made whole? 
What we found at the end of the passage that we read earlier is that Jesus told the man at the pool of Bethesda, get up and walk. Basically what he said was get up, take your bed and walk. Jesus is telling us even in the midst of whatever blaming, whatever excuses, whatever self-pity that we have right now, he's telling us to get up. He, he's putting us to the test. He's trying to find out, do we have the courage? Do we have the faith? Are we ready to put aside the excuses? Are we ready to move forward? so that we can live as the masterpiece, the whole masterpiece that he has created us to be. The man, even though we talk many times when we look at this passage about his excuse, his stating not yes or no to Jesus's question, but to say no one will put me in the pool. But when Jesus issued the test to him, the man got the courage to get up. Now keep in mind, he's been lame for 38 years. He don't even remember what it looks like or feels like to stand up, but he got the courage to try. The man did something that he had not done in 38 years. He, he took the courage or he had the courage to endure the criticism he knew that was going to come from the good church people saying you shouldn't be walking around with your bed on the Sabbath. Let me tell you that the old people used to say that Jesus can make a way out of no way. He made a, no, a way out of no way for this paralytic man, and he can make a way out of no way for you. And if that's you today, let's just take a moment and ask the Lord to make us whole. Ask the Lord to do that which he promised to do, to tell the Lord or to answer the question that Jesus asked so long ago and say, yes, Lord, I wanna be made whole. Now, the first step you have to make, if you have not done this yet, is you need a relationship with Jesus Christ. This man, even though he had just met Jesus, he, and he didn't even exactly know who Jesus was, but he had a conversation because in that brief moment, they had a relationship. You have to have a relationship with Jesus. And if you don't have a relationship with them, so that you can even hear the question that he is asking you and respond. There's no better day than today. There's no better time than right now to respond to him. In Romans 10 and 9, the word of God tells us that we have to confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and then that we have to believe in our hearts. You have to believe it. You have to have faith in it. But if you do those two things, you are saved. You don't have to fill out an application. You don't have to walk into somebody's box. You do not have to wait until your number comes up. If you do those two things, you are saved. So let's go to the Lord and let's go in prayer. First, to make sure that we have established a relationship with him and then to answer that question that he has asked. Do you want to be made whole. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you right now, confessing, Father, that we are sinners, confessing that we have come up short, confessing, Father, that we have not always been what you have called us to be, confessing, Lord, that we know that we are not in the whole state that you created us to be in, but you have asked us, do we want to be made whole? And that answer is yes, yes, yes. Father, I confess with my mouth right now that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God, that he is the son of God, that he came onto this earth, that he preached the gospel for three years. He was crucified for my sins. He was buried, Father, but on that third day, he got up from that grave with all power in his hand. I believe that, and I believe that after he went to heaven to be at your right side, Father, that he is coming back. I believe that with all of my heart, and I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ 
anymore. I'm not ashamed to tell somebody about a risen Savior. And because I believe that Jesus is Lord, and because I am confessing that with my mouth, I thank you for my salvation, Father. And I want to be made whole. On this side of life, I want to live the abundant life that you have promised me. And when I go into glory, I want to live forever in your presence. I believe this, I receive this, and I thank you, Father, for the gift of, et of eternal life. I thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. So if you prayed that prayer in earnest with me, and if you believe the words that came out of your mouth, and if you have received what the Lord has offered you, wholeness, wellness, then welcome to the family of God. And, and if you are a Christian and you are still going through trials and tribulations and you are not in that wholeness that God has called you to be, answer the question, wilt thou be made whole? Yes, and do what God has called you to do to be delivered from that situation. And I guarantee you, he will keep his word. The Lord is faithful. We are not, but the Lord is faithful. So with that, my brothers and my sisters, we are going to conclude our service for right now. We're going to go into our period of benediction. I'm going to read to you from Jude 1. I won't say the first chapter because that's the only chapter in Jude. And wherever you are, if you're able, why don't you go ahead and raise your right hand with me as I read this. The word says, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless and keep you. If you would like to contact us because you have received the Lord as your Savior for the first time, or you just want to talk to us, we are here to assist you in your walk with the Lord. We are your coaches. We are not your judge. But we are here and we stand ready at any time to walk with you as you walk with the Lord. You can always contact us by dropping an email at hisgospel at hisgospel.org. Again, our email address is hisgospel at hisgospel.org. And also, please like and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Make sure that you're aware of when we are coming with new content, new sermons, new uh, inspiration, new messages from the Lord. We are here and we thank the Lord that we have the opportunity via technology to serve you and to serve him by ministering to you. May the Lord bless and keep you. We love you and God loves you even more. Until we see you again, be blessed. If you're looking for a church home, look no further. You can become a member of HGCF no matter where you live in the world. We would love to have you become a part of our family. If you'd like more information about our church, or if you'd like to join with us, just send an email to hisgospel at hisgospel.org. Again, that's hisgospel at hisgospel.org. We'd love to hear from you. Giving is a part of worship. If you don't already give virtually, now is a great time to do so. You can go to our website and click on the Give button at the top of our landing page. Your giving is a matter between you and the Lord. However, we do want you to know that when you give to HGCF, that the money given is used directly and exclusively in supporting God's work. No member of the leadership of His Gospel receives a salary or a stipend from the church.